Right before we jump into this video, would you like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? Well, if you said yes, just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and I'm about to take you inside my camera for a recent photo shoot that I did out in LA with Bernie Sanders as well as AOC. Now yes, this is a politician, but this video has nothing to do with anything political. It is all about photography. So please, if you don't like her or you do like her, don't leave comments that are political down below. This is about photography. And so what I'm going to do here is take you inside of my camera because I've recorded all of my EVFs for the last year plus at this point. I used the Sony a7R4. I was using the 14 to 24 Sigma 2.8 the new 24 to 70 2.8 Sigma, as well as the 135 1.8. At the very end of this, we're gonna get into that portrait that you saw at the beginning, because that is pretty interesting how it all happened. Now, before I jump into the situation, I also wanna tell you how did I end up in the room? Because a lot of you guys wanna know, how do you get access to this? Well, luckily enough, um, many months ago, the Bernie Sanders campaign reached out to me about doing something on the road and push comes to shove, we're out there, we've done stuff, and I went back out to LA to try to get some FaceTime, uh, some more photos and some FaceTime with AOC to get a photo story. Now, I wasn't in the room when they were figuring out what they were gonna do when it came to doing the video. So I spoke to one of her campaign people, I took a photo book out of my bag and showed them what I am capable of doing and told them what I'm trying to accomplish. A Couple minutes later, I'm in the room, and I start to shoot. So right off the bat, here we go. So I am shooting silent. I'm shooting silent because that is, I, they're doing an interview. They're recording audio. I don't wanna ruin that. And being that I'm shooting with the Sony, I mean, just about every mirrorless camera today does it. So it doesn't matter if it's Sony or something else. But let's talk about the composition here. The composition, I, I'm trying to find the behind the scenes shot. You can see I take a couple of pictures here and there. The way that I'm doing it is I'm trying to have foreground elements in there because I think it's more important to have the foreground elements than to have a clean shot because I wanna tell the behind the scenes story. So this is the first angle that I chose. They did say that I could sit on the sofa, but then again, I would be within a couple of feet. That would be more of a distraction. Plus, I like showing the other people that are working. Uh, yeah, did you see that? Let me go back real quick. I was waiting for something. Here's a smile right there. Boom, you get the shot. That's one of the good shots that I picked. That's one of the other good shots that I picked. Now, these are not perfect. These are the first couple, this is from the first batch of images that I did just sitting there. Silent, I don't know what my settings are right now to tell you, but I don't really think that matters at this point. Uh, the lighting was really good because they had these great LED lights, so I believe I was at 400 ISO, and those were the two shots that I thought worked out. But I was testing the 24 to 70 Sigma and looking to give you guys sample images for the review that I did with that. And, and so I want my composition right on. Look, you can see me zoom a little bit. You can see me zoom in, see me zoom out. I'm relying heavily on IAF. So I just rely on IAF the entire time so that it can find the face, can find the eye, and I can focus on composition. It's one less thing that I need to worry about. We know the Nikons are getting there to do it, and I think the Nikon probably would have done fine here, and the Canon would have done fine here. It's just that at this time, the Sony was crushing exactly what I needed it to crush. Is this a winning image? For the review, it's perfectly good for the review. Uh, I believe this one was at 42 millimeters, just to show you the colors and the tones and the clarity that you can get from it. But also I'm trying to tell the story from the wides to the mediums to the, to the tights and the portrait. So let's move on. Now I'm, I'm starting to move around. I'm trying to find the image. I'm looking for a better composition. So this time I wanted to get the videographer on the left and yes, he stretched out a little bit. I'm also concerned about putting my main subject too far to the edges of the frame because we know at 14 there's gonna be some bowing and stretching happening. So I know that I don't wanna put her on the total outside of the frame. She's filming a, whatever, it's a campaign video. And that's why I locked in on this composition because I actually like having this pole in the foreground. And you'll see in just a second with some of the behind the scenes footage, there's not a lot of space to move. My concern here is not being loud, so making no noise, 
not moving around when a take is being taken because if you're a distraction, you're gonna get yelled at. It'll be like, no, what are you doing? Walking around all la di da di da di in the background. You don't wanna be that guy. So you pick your spots and you move in between takes. So you see, I'm take a couple here, I take a couple of there. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some movement and some reaction and facial expressions. So sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Let's see what the, the keeper images were. So there's one, I like the lighting. I like that I have Josh in the background, so he's running the B camera. You've got the A camera right there lined up and you can see the entire room. So for me, I like being able to show that for behind the scenes. So that is why I selected this image. Now, I take a bunch of images because sometimes you, you don't, you're not in control of facial expressions all the time. You're not in control of where the motion happens and trying to get the best shot. So you take a bunch of images and then you pick your best of the best with honors, sir. So as you can see, it is a hotel room. Now, this is the angle that I'm looking for. Look at this composition. I love this. You've got the angle going this way, leading you through the wall from the left to the right. You've got the angle from the right converging near where Josh is. And I think that that like triangle type of thing draws me into the image and it's symmetry. So symmetrically, I like the way that this one is set up. Also, look at how I have the soft box up top. I have that totally composed properly. I'm not cutting that off. I'm also not cutting off the foot of the light stand. I love that this uh, power cable is running where it's running. It's not integral to have the light stand in there. I just thought for this composition it would work. Oh, and if actually, when you look even closer, I even have the sofa not cut off on the right hand side. But I honestly think, yep, she's looking, she's looking. There was some movement there, that's why I took that. And I ended up going with this one. And my composition isn't perfect. Actually, in the bottom corner, that is my camera bag. Now I just noticed that's my camera bag. Up top, I did cut off the top of the light dome. That is not a deal breaker to me. Uh, it's just showing I, I would have preferred to have it stay in there, but in this case, this was the only image that I thought worked out well for what I was looking for. So in between takes, I think people are, yeah, Brian just came into the room. That's the guy walking in front of that camera right now. He is Bernie's photographer on the road. Um, AOC's talking to her people and I'm like, all right, now's my opportunity to get the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. I jump back here, get my composition down low. I think I zoom in just a little bit there. Take that picture, because I, I like this. I like that she's looking down and you can see Josh waiting here. You can see everybody in the background. This is what goes on behind the scenes. Boom, and that's it. And then I'm, then I'm gone, because they're about to do the take. And that's the picture. I really love the composition of this picture. I like showing the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. You have the, the, the lights that are happening here. You've got the crew that's in the background. You have the staff on the left-hand side. You can see that it's not always glamorous. And in terms of settings, the settings aren't gonna change very much because they have a constant light on her with these LEDs. So for me, I, I, I wanna have a fast enough shutter speed just in case there's some movement. I wanna make sure that I'm not terribly too high of an ISO because there's plenty of light, thus why I was at around 400 ISO. And that's really the thinking that's going through my mind. Get your settings pretty close or locked in so I have enough room to either tweak with the shutter speed higher or lower to compensate for the light, but it's not changing. The light isn't changing. It's gonna be consistent the entire time. I know I'm shooting silent, and now I can rely on the autofocus and IAF so that I can get the composition and shoot quicker. Um, by the way, I'm gonna plug something right here. I did have a photo book made because I always give these after photo shoots to the people that are in the images so, so that they don't forget me. This is a book from Printique. They're formerly Adorama Picks. If you go to Printique.com and you wanna make a photo book or any other prints, use my code FRO15 at checkout to get 15% off your entire order. That code does not have a uh, end date, so if you place an order now and you place an order next month, use the code and get 15% off uh, back here to this. All right, so now I went back, yeah, so this was between takes. Um, I went back behind the scenes again. They, they had some more staff come in. Oh, and that's it, that's how quick it was. I started back there and then I moved, I must, oh yes, I was actually asking her if she could step to the side so I could try and get this angle. Flip vertical. Another test with this lens. So you see me zoom in. 
testing it at 70, pulling back out, testing it at 24. So I know these aren't the winner shots. To me, the winner shots are the behind the scenes shots all day, every day. But this is just giving you a look at composition, what I'm looking for. So it's composed well, the autofocus is locked on. All I'm doing is waiting for a moment. I'm waiting for the eyes to come up. I'm waiting for whatever I could, really, I'm waiting for the eyes to come up. And there they are, boom. I don't know if I got that smile or not. We'll have to see which keeper image got picked, but that's what I was waiting for. Smile and eyes. There, I did it again, but I think I got a blink there. There you go. That's what I was looking for. And again, this is all happening while she's doing a live take. So I don't want to be a distraction at all. I mean, I'm already a distraction. Just, just look at me. Look at this hair. There it is. So I got a slight smile. That's what I was looking for. Again, not the perfect image in the world, but for the story, I've got the wide from the behind this, from the side. I've got the wide from another angle. I got the wide from the back. Throw in there some tight shots. We've got a smile, we've got the eyes, and that makes this image pop. And finally, I'm still trying to get this wide shot from this angle. That's why I put the pole right in the middle for a reason. Because it, 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 it shows you it's behind the scenes. It, it's not gonna be a clean shot because I can't get a clean image without anything interfering but I like that. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that the image that you see on the screen right now was edited using FroPack 2. If you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash FroPack 2. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick up FroPack 2 right now, you will save a bunch of money. Or if you bundle FroPack 1 and FroPack 2 together, you will save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, all right, let me pause it here. This is where the portrait happens. Let me explain what happened. Brian, who's with Bernie's camp, asked to get a quick portrait after she was done the interview. And then I was like, oh, I should do the same thing. So while he's doing that, I quickly changed to the 135-18 from Sony because I know that's what I want to use to take a portrait. I don't want the 24 to 70 on there. I say, Congresswoman or AOC, do you mind if I get a portrait as well? She's like, no problem. I'm like, Brian, could you please move out of the chair? Brian moved out of the chair. I sat down and this is what happens. Ready? So you're going to see it shake for a minute that, because that's me getting my not even getting my frame, just getting set, sitting. Sitting, putting the camera up and watch how the focus just pops right in. Took a picture, took another picture, took another picture, and that was it. Three photos and done. The problem was I was still in silent. Now that didn't affect the image because the image looks tremendous. The image is great. It, you didn't lose anything because I was shooting silent. But I think when doing a portrait of somebody who's used to hearing the shutter, everybody's used to hearing the shutter, it kind of hurts because maybe she's sitting there going, why is he just staring at me? Is he taking a picture? So I took three pictures. After the first one, I realized I was in silent. I didn't sit there and go quickly, you know, I hit, I set this button to that and then change it. I didn't do it because I didn't want to take up her time. Is it a distraction that the microphone is on there? I would have preferred that the microphone still wasn't clipped, but this was my opportunity, the only opportunity, to get a portrait. And it was three seconds, just about three seconds. I took three pictures and I moved on. So let's watch that play out one more time. So this is, a, so I turn on the, the, the EVF to start recording. This is me getting situated. All right, I'm situated, I'm still. I get the focus locked on, I take three pictures, I get it, I'm done, and I move on. And that's the final image. Is the composition perfect? No, it's not. I would have preferred to have her slightly more centered, but it is what it is. If you're a cropper, you would crop this. I'm not cropping it. That's just my personal preference. You guys know that, but I still think it works. Uh, another thing I could have done is asked her if she could smile, like show teeth, smile, you know, a little more. I mean, she's smiling here, but maybe if I said, hey, could you do this? It, if I had more time, or I knew her better, I could have probably asked that. These are things that can go through my brain now that hopefully when I'm in the situation again, I can be like, don't be on silent shutter. 
Quickly switch if you know you're going to be able to do a portrait and you can make noise because that will be better for the subject so they can hear it, audibly hear the shutter. Uh, and ask for, okay, this is great. Love that smile. Give me a bigger smile real fast. Click, 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 boom, move on. And click, click, boom, I just quoted a song by Saliva. Josie Scott, lead singer of Saliva. I was at a show once, he was going click, click, and then you heard boom, the mic wasn't up to his mouth. That was the track in the background. Anyway, very happy with the keeper images that I was able to get in this situation. One, the first challenge was getting into the room. Two, was finding the right angles. And I think I was able to do that. And my favorite shot is this shot. That is my favorite shot in there because it's the quiet contemplative moment. She's going over the script for the video. You can see the entire crew and the staff in the background. You can see behind the scenes of behind the scenes. And the very last clip that I wanna show you is her walking down the hallway because I made another kind of error. Here it is, look. So she's walking down the hallway, you've got security. I get on my low angle, I start taking a picture. I'm like, oh man, I'm silent again because it happened, I didn't, I didn't turn off silent at this point. And this is what happens. This is what you get. You get the LED lights giving you the flicker. Anti-flicker would do nothing with this. Um, if I was in the mechanical shutter, which is where I should have been, it would have been better. So <laughs> we'll just play it out again, walking down. This is what you got. Quickly acquires focus, low angle. Let me just explain the low angle. I like getting at lower angles. It makes the subject that you're photographing seem larger than life. Same thing with kids. You get on a low angle because it makes them look bigger. Higher angles above eye level or above waist level when it comes to photographing people, to me, looks more snapshot-ish. Sometimes it works, but I think the majority of the time it doesn't. So this last image, um, most people, I don't know, I can't even justify using it um, because of the banding, but that's, at this point, I was like, darn it, I left that silent on, I need to turn that off next time and get back into mechanical shutter. So, if you're shooting silent in certain situations, remind yourself that when those situations are done, flick back into mechanical shutter mode so you can not worry about any of this flickering in the hallway. So all in all, this was not very long. It may have been 10 minutes of, of actual time in the hotel room. The big deal to me was being able to get myself into the situation to be able to photograph it. And that was partly thanks to a photo book I had in my bag from the first time I photographed Senator Sanders. And that I was able to, to show her people, allow them time to go look at it, to then realize that yes, I do belong there, let me into the room, and I got the photos. So if you have any questions, please let me know down below. Again, leave all the comments only to be related to photography. The rest of them will most likely be deleted or banned from the channel. This is about photographing people, whoever they are, doing your job as a photojournalist. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.